Hello, and welcome back to Madness in the Method, the show where we talk about Nicolas Cage movies, and nothing but Nicolas Cage movies. Um, we take a, a deep dive into his uh, career and try to figure out wh what the hell's going on. And uh, w w w with me, I am Tobias, and with me as always is my friend and trusty co-host, uh, Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello. And I want to remind you um, that if you want to hear all these m ep episodes in uh, in advance, several weeks in advance, you can do that on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. For just three bucks a month, you'll get all the episodes in advance uh, if you're interested. Otherwise, we're available on all major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and the one where you're listening to us right now. So, that out of the way... Let's get into mid '90s Nicolas Cage. I mean, we've been there a while, but we're get, we're getting we're getting we're getting close to to, to the big one. I would say there's just yeah. a couple of movies left. Um, but today we're talking about it could happen to you. The 1994 movie directed by Andrew Bergman and written by Jane Anderson, starring Nicolas Cage and Bridget Fonda and I guess Rosie Perez. Um, yeah. and it's the it's it's the, it's probably one of those movies most people have seen before, or at least that's what it is in my head, because it's one of those movies that was always on TV, at least here in Sweden. Um, so I well I haven't seen all of it before this, but but uh, watching it today, I I've probably seen the opening like five times, but like I said, never never actually finished <laughs> it. What about you? Well, I I. I'm pretty sure I have seen it all at least once because most of the things was uh, mem I remembered some bits and pieces from the entire movie. Mm. Uh, but I before I saw it now, I couldn't really explain more than like the first act of the movie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's, I, that's the one you remember. Yeah, but uh, when pe when things happen, I remember this. I remember this thing too. So I probably have seen all of it, um, and I've. It was a while back, as you said, when we, when it was on TV. So mm -hmm. one could be like early two thousands, maybe, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, and uh, yeah, it didn't leave an impression uh, at all. And I, I spoke about it uh, at the end of the last podcast that I, I was a little worried about this movie. It could be mm -hmm. that it would be equally as boring and uninteresting as Guarding Tess. Yes. Uh, and and uh, um, now having well, well, watched it, uh... Uh, I I I would agree with myself. <laughs> oh, okay. Was, uh, I well okay. It wasn't as bad as Guarding Tess. Um, no. But this one had a a big other issue, which is was it was so nauseatingly wholesome and sugar sweet that I just couldn't I couldn't get on board. What even at all? <laughs> Wow. Well, I I I, uh, I would uh, s say similar things, but I wouldn't call it nauseating. I would okay. call it like genuine and like honest in its depiction of 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 um, uh, of, of people just being nice to each other <laughs> for the most part. Um, well, I'll just say I I loved it. <laughs> you loved it, really? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's not a like, huh? masterpiece or anything, but I I was. Uh, I was thoroughly, thoroughly immer immersed in the movie. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and this could be one of the first movies where we completely disagree with each other. Then. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so my biggest issue with this movie is that it is, uh, well, I at least felt it was extremely cartoonishly uh, stereotyped typical of all the characters it was like this person is bad look at all the bad things there's no redeeming qualities there's only bad qualities and look at this person who is the good person only has good things to do and never done a bad thing in their life and that was every character in the movie either they were completely horribly bad or completely saintly good there was no gray zones or in between at all, and I it, it infuriated me, and I couldn't get behind it because of that. Huh? Well, 
to to that, I'll rebuke. There's really only three characters in the movie, and if, if they are polar opposites, that that's fine to me. If it was a case of like twenty different characters all being either super chaotic evil or super mega lawful good, yeah, then it would have been a problem. No, but yeah, the, he, they which, repre- they represent two different uh, ways of thinking. I like we have that. So the characters, the cast in this movie. Okay, so first of all. For the people who haven't seen the movie, maybe we should explain what it's about. Yeah, it's a <laughs> it's a police officer in New York, um, early nineties, who uh, when he he is visiting a coffee shop or a diner for lunch, he does not have enough cash to give the waitress a tip. So he says, "How about I split you my lottery ticket? <clears throat> excuse me, lottery ticket winnings um, with you if there is any." And she's like, "Huh, sure." Unfortunately, or fortunately, he wins. Um, that's the sixty-four million dollar uh, lottery, New York City, New York State lottery, I think it is. Um, yeah, so, I think so state. He, yeah, he and his wife um, win four million dollars of that sixty-four million dollars. Um, but he, of course, then has to give this waitress two million dollars. Um, and it's not, it's, and the movie doesn't, it's not like the movie is like, is he gonna do it? No, he just, <laughs> there's like yeah. three minutes where he's contemplating, but then he's just like, no, I should do it. <laughs> yeah. We have this one scene which is like fake tense, where, he, yeah. Cause, cause he talks with his, I think, I don't know, I don't remember if it's his wife or colleague, uh, where he said, well, I could just say we want 10,000 and give her five. I think that's uh, uh, his uh, his uh, his uh, 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 colleague Wendell Pierce yeah. playing Bo so, Williams. So yeah, so so he has this envelope with uh, I mm-hmm. think it's a check for five thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. supposed to give it, but then she gives this sob story about oh the world is so hard for me, everything has been bad. Well, and, <laughs> it's, and, not a, it's not a sob story. She she went into personal bankruptcy the day before. <laughs> Because yeah, her, her cheating husband had had uh, maxed out her uh, credit cards. Yeah, because she has never done anything wrong in her life. She's only bad luck. And her husband was the villain of the earth who only did bad things and never did anything good or had any redeeming qualities. Well, like yeah, every character. In uh, this in this story, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm just I'm huh. just setting the scene for my issues with the movie here. Okay. So okay. yeah. And so he in in last minute, but we all knew it would happen. It's 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 not a surprise. No. Uh but in, in last minute he takes the envelope and puts it in his back pocket and then he says, you know what? Uh I'll give you the choice. Do you want double the tip, the normal tip, or do you want uh half of my winnings? Without saying winnings. And she's just winnings and yeah, she gets Two million dollars. Yeah, she. And, she. He says, "I was hoping you'd pick that, but why? Because you want nothing? Mm-hmm. No, because I want four million dollars." Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then we have some other things that happens, but it's not really important. But the most of the movie is about sort of how the money corrupts in a way. Yeah. Uh, and and it's it's it in it destroys all of. All relationships, more or less, in the movie. Um, but also, it's about revealing true identities of people. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, it's it's a, it's a it's about. It, 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 I read somewhere it was some quote. I don't know if it was a, a review or just someone who, who said it in a comment or something. It's a it's it's a, it's a movie about like like uh, true true generosity. Mm. Um, or something like that. Another word for generosity. Something we we mm. don't see very often in in in, yeah. in in movies. Or I mean, we do see it in real life, but I mean, not mm. like this. Because because we get really in the beginning. Because that's the the big issue is this: the waitress and the cop and the cop's uh, wife. That's yeah. that's the the trio of of the entire movie that everything mm-hmm. revol- revolve around these people. And so the wife, the cop's wife. She says like from the start of the movie before they even win that she is a person who needs money. She wants to buy things. She wants to um, do things. And we also find out throughout the movie that she's pretty. She's into like investing and making money, sort of. Yeah. Uh, the second, like, the second they she's get a the pure money, capitalist. Sort yeah, of. she's looking to grow that money from two million to whatever you know. Yeah. Uh, and then we have the cop who just wants. To do good—that's this driving 
action, and that's why he still is a beat cop, even though he should be a detective, I think. But he yeah. he refuses because he wanted to do good on the street and help people. <laughs> uh, and then we have the waitress who, I don't know, is a, a a good person who's down on their luck, I guess. Yeah, she's, uh, there's not she's that the much most personality. Re- she's the most regular person. Yeah. Uh, but so that's the trio. But then we have some some other cast members who has small speaking parts from here and there. So just going through the the notable characters in this movie, we have this trio, and then we have so obviously the waitress and the cop are the good people who has never done anything bad in their life. They have no uh, flaws at all, really. <laughs> uh, more than being too good. That's the only flaws they have. Okay. Um, <laughs> And then we have the wife, who is a horrible, horrible person, yes. who they really ham it up being a horrible person from, like, the beginning of the movie. She's just nagging and being hateful and angry and just being a bad person, really. Oh, yeah. Uh, for no real reason. Um, and then uh, we have the waitress's ex-husband, who is a bad person. He stole her, made her go in complete bankruptcy. He's never yeah. done a good thing in her life, and he's just, he's just cheating, cheating, lying bastard. Uh, Played by and then, a quote-unquote young Stanley Tucci. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's weird to see him in such a small part. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, and then we have also the, the wife gets sort of involved with a, a, an investor-type guy. Yeah, Jack uh, Gross. And, yeah, so he's, he's a Wall Street guy, but he's he's the scum of the earth. He just wants to do things. And in in the end, when it's a little ambiguous that maybe they'll live happily after, he's like, no, he scammed them for money and left town. Because <laughs> he's bad. Uh, and then we have the cop's colleague, who is a, just a good person who lets the cop sleep on his floor when he's down on their luck and helping out and being there for his buddy. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 I mean, do you see the issue? There's no grace. They, the only personality traits of every character who has a speaking line in the movie is good, only good, or only bad. Well... And that's the problem. That's... Ugh. Okay. I, I, I did not see that as a problem. Uh, I think... Um, and I, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, Wendell Pierce's character, Bo Williams, the the colleague, the other cop. He he's not yeah. like a he's not a saint. He's just being nice to his friend who's down on his luck. And towards the end of the movie, I don't see that as a problem. Eh? Sure, the other characters, yes, I I agree, I agree. Um, but I mean, that's the point of the movie. If they were all like but in it's... the middle, then it would be like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should. Nothing would be done. Nothing would get done. Yeah, but it is it's, a, it's not it's... it's not a character driven movie. It's a story driven movie. Yeah, but it's 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 sort of like a fairy tale for no. I, it's it's written like a fairy tale, but it's not framed as a fairy tale. There's no. We even have this like sort of angel character who is like the the um, storyteller of the movie. Yeah, he's literally called Angel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Played but by then Isaac that's Hayes. all. But well, then that's real. That no, it is not a fairy tale. He's just an undercover press guy. Yeah. Sort of. And I don't know. It it felt just I don't know. Uh, it was it needed some more uh, some less realism. That's okay. the issue. It was too realistic for such flat characters. Well, it, it's kind of fun. I don't know. I don't know. You you know this is based on a true story. Yes, and yeah. that story, the original story, is a lot better than this movie. What? Actually. That one's even more sweet because there is no there is no like evil person who wants to steal the money. Yeah, There's exactly. Like- that is just nice people doing nice things, not these these. Fringe people who is just I need to destroy for no real reason more than destroying. Yeah, yeah but just... but then there's just nice people. Imagine that movie. Then you wouldn't even have a conflict. It would just be here's some money, yay, and everyone's yeah, happy. But I, <laughs> it would have been more interesting. I was I'm thinking of well, okay, that's not fair. No, never mind. I was gonna say Wonderful Life, but it, that that movie does have a bad guy. I was, I, oh. I forgot there was a bad guy in that movie. <laughs> But that movie is, is very close to this one, I'd say. In okay, we need to pause. I just we're not going to discuss. I just need to know that you don't hate. It's a Wonderful Life. No, I love that movie. I love I love oh, that movie. God. Don't don't worry Seven! about. Okay. <laughs> we t- we talked about that before. I, oh, I love yeah, that okay, movie. Yeah, because that has the fairy tale thing with the okay. angel and the yeah, magic sure. and the and the framing of the movie that this is a 
uh, yeah, it's a Christmas story. <clears throat> we have the yeah. snow and all of those things. Yeah. This movie needed more of that. Well, I gotta say, it's kind of funny that you bring up uh, It's a Wonderful Life and Christmas, because um, we're recording this on the 2nd of November, it's probably coming out like in the end of November or beginning of December. Um, just so you know, we're recording these a bunch of weeks in advance. That's how you can get them early on, on uh, Patreon. Um, and as we're recording this, I am a huge fan of Christmas. It's my <laughs> favorite time of year. Like, December is... I am I am I'm in a state of bliss in all of December. Um and I've already started feeling the Christmas feelings because I was <laughs> I was looking up like um I was looking up Christmas presents yesterday and making lists of what Christmas movies I want to watch and I I mean I oh I started bawling and and I think that is that, that might have affected me cuz I was yeah. just I was just so happy watching this movie. All these happy people, they're having so much fun. Yeah. They're doing nice things. And, and then the evil uh, witch uh, wants to take the money, but yeah. in the end happiness and love wins. I was just so glad. Yeah, I think that could have <laughs> something to do with it cuz it is very it, it has a very wannabe Christmas feel movie. Yeah. This, uh, it has, imagine I, if it was snowing in this movie. Oh my god. I would think it would have worked a lot better for me. Because <laughs> I think that's one of the biggest issues that it doesn't feel magical in any way. It just feels weird. Flat. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I just want to quickly, before we leave this, uh, my, my issues with the characters. Another thing with specifically the wife yeah. and, and, and if we only think about... we. we uh, disregard the waitress. Don't think about that. It's just sure. the, just the cop and the wife, their yeah. relationship and, and so forth. There's uh, high school sweethearts who never really had... After they grew up, they realized they're bad for each other, but they never really said it out loud, but they yeah. both sort of know it. It's, it's a failing relationship. Um, but it's, a, uh, it's stagnant. <clears throat> yeah, 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 I guess. But he he says in in a in a line in the movie the cop yeah, that when, when they're at the restaurant yeah that it may maybe it was a bad idea he says with a, a lot of more words but yeah yeah <laughs> um anyway so if we think about that I wholeheartedly believe that she is in the right and he is in the wrong in this entire thing what <laughs> yeah. You saying you saying Rosie Perez is 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 well, yeah. not, the, not the hero of the story, but she's no right. No, I she's I think she is right if you think about it in from a relationship standpoint. You have a relationship with another person, and you win money together as a couple, uh, and you have this kind of uh, stagnant or failing relationship uh, where a lot of issues are coming from. Your lack of money and ambition and... Well, from one part of the relationship, at least. Uh, and so you get this money. And the she then finds, finally, we can get a nicer apartment. We can let this grow. We can, we can buy things. We can create something with this. We can build a new life with this. But then you have this cop. And he says, I'm happy as is. Even though he's not. He says he's not. But he just... No, I'm going to give it away to who? Whoever I want, and that's not your problem. And it's, isn't that fucking unfair? Shouldn't he at least talk with her? And like, hi, I'm trying to give this to the cop society or whatever. I'm going to give money to that. And just check with him, check with her if that's fine, and just work as a couple. And then... She says, all right, fine, I'll do things at home, I'll fix home, and you can go give away our money, and I'm going to try and make it grow. And he comes up, did you throw off my favorite chair? It's like, yeah, I did, it was ugly, we're re- remodeling here. You should have asked, oh, for fuck's sake. It's, come on, if you think about it in that way, he's in the wrong, she's in the right, but just because the movie has framed the, the mo- framed it that she is definitely bad and he is definitely good, we need to take his side. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree. <laughs> okay. I uh, I was uh, I this I wish this was a video podcast because I was face palming <laughs> through a lot of that. Um. Uh. Of course. Of course. Uh. She is entitled to part of the money since they are married. 
Uh, this is the argument they had in court. And, I'm not and, talking and about them. entitlement and loss. I'm talking about are you a, f- a fair person who talks with your partners about major life decisions? That's what I'm talking I'm not talking about legal well, issues. Neither, I don't care about that. Neither of them did that. No, but he started not doing that, well, and he, then she retaliated, and now she's the bad guy? Well, well. Um... She, uh, the first thing she does is shop for herself. She buys a bunch of clothes. I don't know. They don't put well, any price tags technically on it. Before they, several, te- tens technically, of before they of do that, before she shops, he gives away half the money to waitress. Because he promised her. And yeah, still. They, dis- they discussed it. He never forced uh, uh, Muriel, his wife, Rosie Perez. But she yeah. agreed to it. They didn't. I mean, yeah. they, they kind of gloss over that detail. But she agrees to give uh, the waitress half the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. she regrets so, it later. But yeah. you know what? No backsies. So they talked about it. Yeah. And then they gave me money. Then they went out shopping together as a couple and bought things together. And well, then he gave. Well, they did it as a couple. Sure. As long as she she's was happy there. Is what he says. You know, yeah. so and then and then he goes away and gives about ten thousand dollars to charity without consulting her. Yeah, it's his and money then too. She, and then she remodels the house, and that's the bad thing. No, he doesn't care about the remodeling. He just thought maybe she didn't have to throw out his chair. I mean, the framing of it—it's framed as "look how bad she is." All remodeling. Without even discussing it with him, he just want to live here and have it have a shared life. Why is she this way? I, I mean, I, I, I think you're, I think you're, uh, you're, 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 um, uh, what do you call it? Your, your, your angle is a little too, uh, it's a little too steep. They're, the, the, they're not really posing her as the bad person. Uh, I mean, she, she's definitely, I mean, she, <laughs> she's not evil yet, but she's definitely the bad one of those two, if you want to call it that. It's not until she asks for the divorce that you like starts to question her, her, her motives. Uh, before that, she's just ah, she's she's frivolous. She's spending it on herself, whatever. He, he and he wants to spend it on other people, whatever. All um, I'm saying is there is an argument here, and they decide not to even discuss it. That there are great, you can make great parts of this movie. There are gray zones in this movie, but they refuse. They heavy-handedly refuse to talk about it. Well, it's a romantic comedy. I mean, they're not going to sit down and have financial discussions. That's not no, fun. No, but they, there are romantic comedies that that discuss heavy-handed things. It is possible. In fact, and actually discuss things and have something to say. Yeah, but I, I don't see this movie benefiting from that. I, I don't, um, at least. Well, I, I see it benefiting. I see that's that's what it's missing. That's the big part, why it's, what it's missing. Okay. <laughs> I just, ah, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, I, mean, I, I can't. I'm, I'm like, sure. I, I, I can't even see your point of view. <laughs> it's like, okay, okay, I understand. Yeah, I get it. It's like, I do not get it. <laughs> <laughs> it is the first time in this podcast that we have we disagree this much. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, no, I. I just, I, I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. Um, but come on, give me your point of view more. I, I, I talked a lot about what I, I dislike. What, what is it that catches the magic for you? What is it that makes it pop? I don't know. <laughs> um, uh, what, what made what made it special was um. Or made it what made it interesting. It's not special. It's oh. it's like a seven out of ten. Spoilers for the end of this podcast. What? But oh yeah. Um, I, I was I was shocked that you do you spoiled the end of the podcast. Oh, okay. Not, not, <laughs> not, not your score. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it's it's um. I I, I like that that uh, uh, the, the 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 story the story became. Not so much about the money as what uh, what what the money revealed about the different people, and and you had a a um, I, I think a very nice um, uh, I don't know what you call it in romantic comedy, but the the meet cute of course is at the diner, and their their budding relationship how it grows during the movie. I like that part, um, 
and I, 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 I had some strong emotional reactions to stuff that Rosie Perez did, and her goddamn lawyer, Richard Jenkins, <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> I was, I was livid. Well, um, yeah, I, I mean, you're, you're supposed to. They, they really built up to it, and really, it was a nail in the coffin for for how, how it was sort of. Uh, it was interesting, like how 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 far they could stretch it. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> yeah, like. Um, um, but then I, then I also liked, and that's I, I guess that's a thing we've we see in a lot of movies about people who uh, suddenly become rich, is that the the money doesn't really matter. I mean, other than having enough to you know survive or live at least live a decent life, money is so not important. It's it's love, and I was like, oh, it's so so wholesome. I loved it. I I can be I can I can be very cynical and I can appreciate very cynical movies. I think I prefer those actually. But when something this wholesome appears, I'm just oh, I melt. Yeah, I mean, I I usually like wholesome movies. I mean, I'm, well, I'm usually I, I'm not this this hard about it, but it it was just something that in this movie was just something. It, I, it didn't work. I just wanna I just wanna say maybe your opinions have changed this sense, but I remember someone in uh, well, I guess elementary school. That's how long we've known each other, <laughs> saying that they didn't like Forrest Gump. Because it was too schmaltzy, and this will say, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> well, I mean, I, I still don't like Boris Gump. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> but 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 that's that's not for that reason. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. That, that was, it's it's more for the reason that I, it, it feels, the, the movie feels unearned, because he just happens to be places, and I sure, think that is, sure, it, sure. it feels, it feels, the the successes in the movie isn't, isn't earned, and that's my biggest issue with it, okay. I'd say. And we're not um, discussing Forrest Gump. So. No, we're not. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was a, that was kind of a similar reaction to this, because when I first heard that, and we were like in our early teens, and we're like, nah, I don't like Forrest Gump. I was like, what? Are you sick? Is there something wrong with your heart? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but anyway. But yeah, because yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, as I said, Christmas movies, love that shit. Eat it yeah. up. Like, yeah. um, uh, the, what, what a wonderful life, and... Uh, I mean, well, I guess Bad Santa is great, but it's not that wholesome. It's not well. It it has a uh, it has a it's it has a wholesome uh, center with a very very hard and dark yeah. shell. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, the wholesome Christmas. I like. Oh those. yeah, I, yeah. I like those, and I, I like. There's a lot of wholesome, really wholesome movies that I like too. Oh, okay. um, that's nice. But so, so it's 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 not that. It's just <laughs> this movie. I I they missed the mark. There was. I get. I didn't get into it at all, and hmm. I. Yeah, I guess. I, I guess that. I can. That I can actually see because it is. It is like you say. It is very black and white. There is no gray areas. Yeah. Or any I neutral mean, characters. So I can see that being a problem. Definitely. Yeah, it could. It could have worked better if, if, if the trio. If we had like the, and they sort of try it, but not really. If the waitress was sort of the gray area. If the waitress could have been more of a. Uh, a, a combination of the two, of uh, if she, tr- then no, he wouldn't have not. fallen in love with her. Yeah, I guess, I guess, but <laughs> okay, have have a few characters that just could be could just sell down that this isn't a real world and these people are exceptions. These are not the rule, but it yeah. feels like these people are the rule in the world this takes place in, and then it's not that interesting. If everyone is is super good, eh, and if everyone is super evil. Eh, I mean, it's. We need to know that these are special people. All right. And even at the end, to spoil it, it is a what a what a wonderful life ending. Oh um, yeah. The, like oh. entire city of New York is giving them money. But okay, so everyone in this city, in this version of New York, is good a good person. Everyone well, is a good person. That that kind of if 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 you wanna if you wanna. Uh, um... Uh, stretch, he spread stretch, the good and all that. No, 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 <laughs> no. But th- that they are kind of uh, the odd people out in New York. Um, but their story, since it's being so closely de- uh, documented by Isaac Hayes' character, actually turns. I mean, not like not like a magical thing, but I mean. Uh, it kind of turns New York's uh, in, into a more you know giving city, and that's why they they decide to help those two special people in the end. 
Um, because New York is known as a pretty mean town. Um, yeah, but we never see that. Well, we see they, we see a we see, robbery. We yeah, see we all see, the the goddamn journalists. We see the blood sucking lawyers. There, you know, there's bad people. Yeah. Yeah, but we also he gets see, shot for Christ's sake. <laughs> yeah, we see one robbery, and uh, and then we see that's more than we usually bef- get in a romantic comedy. I'm just and saying. And before and before that and after that, we have about forty people that he says hello to on the street, who is super friendly. Uh, even like the homeless people are super friendly <laughs> and just. Uh, kids on the playing baseball in the street, and it's just a good time. Yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I don't my, know. my 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 last my last attempt to to win you over, no, not to win you over, but my last <laughs> argument is that this is um why this is so uh like ho- wholesome and and very yeah like people are either good or bad is because. It is based on a, like, arguably even more fairy tale esque real story, and that that their their framing of saying this is a true story, but I mean they still have a a, a narrator called the angel in the movie, so it's kind of oh. to say that sometimes fairy tales come true, and this is one of those very rare cases. I and that's you know why they chose it to tell it the way they did, and I guess but, that's what I I I, I liked it. So about. I'm. I'm- you looked into it, but I'm just telling for the the listeners yeah. the actual story that this movie is, is based, as stated, is based on a true story. Mm-hmm. And the actual story that happened, which is, I would say, is more realistic than the movie, uh, which is yeah, fair. Yeah, it, 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 it wouldn't it's work real. as a movie, because uh, you don't uh, have any conflict in the real story. Yeah, but in that movie, there's this cop who's been going to the same diner for years. I think it's like over like 15 years or something. something so like he's that, yeah. he's good friends with one of the waitresses and they chat every day and they're like they're friends. Yeah. Uh see every each every day they see each other. And then one day he comes in and he's going to pick lottery numbers but he uh and it, he says as a joke, "Hey, you can pick half of the lottery numbers and then we can split it." Sort of. And mm-hmm. not not as a joke. He's, he's It's yeah. like a, a, fr- a friendly thing cuz we never win anything anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And then they win, I think it's six million dollars. Yes. Uh and then he and his wife goes to the diner for dinner and as sort of a friendly joke, instead of telling her that she's one with them, they leave her half as a tip. Yeah. Just ha look at your tip. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. And, and and it's yeah. Um so so that's the True story. Yeah, and there's um, no, there are no divorces because they they were both no. happily married before, and they their marriages were be, stayed happy for many many years afterwards. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's. I mean, that's even more of a fantastical tale. So they had to add, you know, they had to add, for, for a movie. A, every movie needs conflict uh, in some way. So they had to add. The the bad one, the witch, the rosy Perez, uh, um, and maybe, maybe they overdid it a little bit. But yeah. you know, I I I was on board with it. <laughs> I would have wanted some more some more more characters, which is more in the middle. Um, yeah, some yeah. more some more like good people turning bad and bad people turning good throughout the movie, sort of that. Not that everyone just stays the same. Um, a little more development, I think. Yeah, and, th- and that is something that some of the, the, the reviews I read, they, they mentioned as well. The characters are very one-note, and I can agree yeah. with that. It was, it was it just wasn't a problem for me in this story, yeah. um, because I was so on board with the wholesomeness. Um, but another comment we I think I read last week was that this is th- uh, the movie where Nicolas Cage... Is not the most rage cagey person in the movie. That would go to Rosie Perez. I don't know if you read that as well, or if you talked about that. No, that's not something I'm. Yes, yeah, so, some someone of. wrote somewhere like Rosie Perez out cages Nicolas Cage in this. Jeez. So let's discuss uh, Nicolas Cage's performance in this, since this, oh. this is the Nicolas Cage podcast. Oh. Yeah, I mean he does a pretty good. Again, as we said last, there's like night. Late nineties Nicolas Cage is a weird acting for Nicolas Cage. Yeah, and it's I, very I... down to earth, mellowed out, but still not bored. Just 
Shill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's reined in. Um, yeah. And first of all, uh, I think it's partly because of the director, uh, Andrew mm-hmm. Bergman is his name, right? Yeah. Yes. Which I found out the, is the same director who made uh, Honeymoon in Vegas. Another very good ro- romantic oh. comedy with Nicolas Cage. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so that that's probably why, like he's that's that's his kind of direction, a little more mellow, um, mm. and all and also, I think at this point, because now we are we're f- more than ten years into his professional like career, because it started in what eighty three, eighty two, with um, um, yeah. uh, Valley Girl. Uh, eighty yeah, it it came out eighty three, so I think it was it was production eighty two. Yeah, and at this point, I mean, he has been getting you know. Uh, bigger, bigger movies um, like 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 Honeymoon in Vegas and and uh, uh, Guarding Tess, and then this. I mean, he he is he's becoming a household name, and I think this is pure conjecture, but I'm thinking he's like I should go for the Oscar, so he's trying to like uh, seem more normal to to the regular like the wider audience in America. Right. I, I think it's something like that. So then he can like wow them with his most. Like uh, 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 passionate performance in uh, *Leaving Las Vegas*, which he did the year after this. Mm. I'm thinking it's something like that. Like, I think this is a strategy that he has. Yeah. Um, it feels like it. In, in we've kind of seen similar things earlier in, in his uh, um, uh, career. That he's like he's picked specific movies. He's worked with specific directors. Um, like to to kind of like. Plant himself in the uh, uh, in the industry, so to speak, and yeah. that, but but not 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 so cold and calculated that it becomes you know bad. He's he's still doing a great job, but he's also you know uh, he's he's thinking about his career. I, I mean, I'm just getting that feeling from these kind of choices he's made the last years. Yeah, I mean, it is definitely possible. It is kind of one of the questions I've always always had, and half question, half joke that will always. I've always said about Nicolas Cage's career that he tried until he won an Oscar, and then he fucked. Then he, <laughs> then he didn't try anymore. Then he then he started to have fun. Yeah, uh, something like and, that. Yeah, and and that was uh, yeah. I said it as a joke for several years, and I think that was one of the questions of this podcast: is is there any truth in this that that he actually he did try until he won an Oscar, and then he then he started to have fun. Yeah, and I would say. Somewhere around here, maybe he starts to. Before this, definitely had fun with Vampire's oh, Kiss. Oh, and sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wild at Heart, no. Yeah, Wild at Heart. Yeah, Wild at Heart. Yeah, Wild at Heart and uh, uh, Deadfall. Oh yeah. He, oh yeah. He, oh, there's, he, yeah. There's definitely projects where he just, and eh, this is not going to be a success. Let's just yeah. try to have fun instead. <laughs> yeah, but maybe at this point with Red Rock West guarding Tess, it could happen to you. He started starts to think more and try, try harder to actually win. Mm-hmm. Have set the set the goal to win an Oscar. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if if it that's if it is like that, but it makes sense. Oh yeah, I think so. And because this feels like um, just like just like Red Rock West and Guarding Tess, it feels very much more grounded than his earlier stuff. Mm. I mean, there is no rage cage in this. I don't yeah. think he. I think he. Barely raises his voice, and he yeah he grabs Rosie Press's arm when they're talking with the lawyers. That's about it. But that's not rage cage. It's just him being angry. Yeah, it, it, that's it. it. And in that that moment, even feels a bit off or out of place, really. Yeah, yeah, a little um, bit because yeah. he's he's almost going there. And he's like, no, wait, wait, don't, don't. Yeah. Think of the Oscars. Think of the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, it, it it feels sort of the 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 r- directors. Okay, we need the rage cage, and he's like, no, no, I won't do I it. I can't. I can't. Not do this it. time, Andy. I won't. Uh, but yeah. So, and what I gotta say about specifically guarding Tess, and it could happen to you. Red Rock West. It was uh, very similar, but not that one. I don't like watching this Nicolas Cage. Really? Okay. It is not that enjoyable. Yeah, Red Rock West, it works. Guarding Tessin could happen to you. It's very... It could be anyone. There's no specific Nicolas Cage characteristics. No, There's that's true. There's nothing yeah. interesting. There's just... It could be any white guy. I, um, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, and that's that's what I mean. He's, he's, he's picking... Picking projects to to uh, to uh, uh, appeal to yeah to a wider audience, not people who like want that specific Nicolas Cage character acting. 
Yeah, and I I don't enjoy it. I don't I'm I don't find it interesting because other people can do the same thing better. Sure. Uh so yeah, yeah. I, 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 every time I see in both of these movies, it feels like yeah, he does. He does a good job. He doesn't. He does, there's nothing bad about it. But there are other actors that could, could do it better. So why put Nicolas Cage in it? Sort of. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, but again, then, he it's it's probably his strategy. So or was his strategy? This is like <laughs> twenty years ago. So. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, and I, I agree. Like, this is not as entertaining to watch as, like, yeah, well, definitely a lot of Vampire's Kiss, but even yeah. movies like, yeah, Wild at Heart or, or Zandali or uh, Amos and Andrew or Rumblefish or whatever. They, this yeah. is less interesting, but I still think he does a good job as an actor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he does a good job. He's just a, he's, but it's, it's a good job. It's <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. It's, yeah. It's just a good job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But but um, you I uh, probably asked this before which I've forgotten. You haven't seen Leaving Las Vegas, right? No, I have not. Okay. Well we've uh, also we've also talked about that, which is I they these theories could go hand in hand or they could be one or the other. <laughs> we have talked about him, you know, going crazy and then reining himself in and like trying to be a real actor, you know, proper actor, and then it all starts to bubble over and he does a movie <laughs> like Deadfall or Vampire's Kiss he has to yeah. he has to unleash the rage cage. <laughs> Um, and if he's kind of been downplaying a little bit now since Deadfall, which was the last big uh-huh. explosion, he's done one, two, three, and he's going to do two more movies. I think, unless he flips out one of those uh-huh. movies where he's like, he's reined in and he's trying to be, a, you know, a, a real actor. And leaving Las Vegas might just have been one of those explosions again, the eruption of the rage cage. Um, and it just happened to, uh, f- fall into favor with the uh, Academy jury. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So, um, so it could either be a a, a, re- a really, v- really meticulous ten year plan, or it's just um, he's a he's a volcano of acting. I don't know. <laughs> no. Um. So yeah, I I think that's it. I mean, there are some trivias. There's some uh, uh, quite few reviews. Uh, this movie f- seems quite. Um, uh, I want to say. Um, a lot of people notice it when it came out. Feels like, yeah, um, which is weird, or maybe not. Maybe that's because that's why it became a TV movie. Yeah, I mean, I I, I haven't looked up any uh, box office stuff. A you know, it it did fine as a as a romantic comedy. It grossed thirty, well, almost thirty eight million worldwide on a twenty million dollar budget, which isn't great. But it's you know d- different back then, so that's that means they made a profit, so they were fine with that. Um, yeah. And it got pretty good reviews. Um, it, it's uh, on Meta- Metacritic; it has a sixty-four out of a hundred, which is you know uh, preferable. Um, yeah. I haven't read any of the user reviews, but I'm guessing. I mean, I read I read one guy gave it like a nine out of ten, like ah, perfect, wholesome, you know, heartfelt comedy. I was like, yeah. Exactly, man. You get me, person who wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading it as the movie was uh, was wrapping up. Mm. Yeah, charming and cute, feel good movie. You know? mm. Yeah, Ebert give, gave it pretty good too, right? I oh think. yeah, an eighty eight. Yeah, the yeah. Mo- the movie's not so much about oh that is, oh that's the re- uh, review. Yeah, the movie's oh, not okay. so much about romance as about good heartedness. Which is a rarer quality and not so selfish. Yeah, not, yeah, exactly. And Cage has a certain gentleness that brings out nice, soft smiles on Fonda's face. <laughs> oh yeah, that's another thing that really I thought they had great chemistry. I really felt the emotions between those two people. Nicholas Cage and Rose Press, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey now, no, <laughs> Bridget Fonda and uh, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. I thought they uh, were, and p- partly because uh, that was another thing that just made it so feel so wholesome and nice. They didn't just jump right into you know falling in love and you know meeting up in the hotel room. That was that was the end of the movie. They cultivated a friendship, a a, a, a not a normal, but a a a friendly relationship first, and they during the the uh, like the the long second act. They the the their their feelings grew very, in in a slow but steady and very uh, organic pace. I don't know. It didn't it didn't feel when they when they actually finally hooked up, so to speak. It it felt earned, and I was like, ah, yes. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. The 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 um, chemistry and the relationships it felt it felt it felt genuine. There was, was no was, no issues there. Yeah. That, uh, speaking of pace, also, because um, someone talked about this being yeah the the worst review it got was that it's very one note script and yes it is because it is just them being nice giving out subway tokens and giving money to to uh, homeless people and playing stick ball with the kids in 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 queens and just when that when you're thinking like so what's the story here it's just them winning money and being nice to people that's when you introduce the divorce and the lawyers. Right when it could get boring, they change it up. It's a pacing, mwah, formula, mwah, perfect <laughs> for a romantic comedy. Um, so then that's 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 also why I I really enjoyed it. It's for what it is, it's perfect. Well, for me, for me. For well, me. I wouldn't think <laughs> I wouldn't say perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, on paper, it's good. On paper, it's very good. Uh, yeah. I, I think that I think the there there it needs a lot of work. Well, no, no, it it needs a little bit of a li- work. a little bit of work. <laughs> but that that little bit that missing is for me is uh, is me not caring about it. It's yeah. So, so it's, it's it's right over the tip for you. Yeah. It's it's just a few <laughs> details. That makes all the difference. For okay, me, I'd sure. say. Yeah. Just tone down something, tone up some other things, and just ah, it could have been so good, but no, it's false flat <laughs> for me. <laughs> because it also, it, this is a movie, as we demonstrated. This movie it lives and breathes on your emotional engagement. Oh yes, definitely. If you don't have that, there is nothing interesting on screen. Oh yeah. If I mean, you don't if you don't are emotionally invested, then I I can, I can tell you when 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 uh, the judge rules and the, no, the the jury first and foremost rules in favor of Rosie Perez on all accounts, even <laughs> like the waitress having to give back the money she was given, it's mm. a gift. I'm I don't know the law, but I'm pretty sure you can't do that. Yeah, especially since <laughs> they were married when that happened. Uh, anyway, anyway, so, um, uh, I I was just I I I just went blank. I was just oh, f- this fucking bullshit, goddamn <laughs> motherfucker. She was so and and but then you know and just like they, oh, I guess mostly like Bridget Fonda felt because she you know she read really, like she she feels as she mentions I've ruined your life. Mm. Ever, ever, since you met me, you've lost everything. And he, but then he says, "What? Since I met you, I, I got you." <laughs> My heart skipped a beat, and, that, and that's because then, then I, uh, you, you hit rock bottom, and Rosie Perez wins all the money. Yeah. But then those last, it's like fifteen minutes after that left, it slowly build it up, and then it's a happy ending anyway. It's like, ah, it's I was so nice. I, I, I was I was sort of angry, not like furious, but I was sort of angry when she won because I was like, "Huh, that's Weird? I didn't think that would happen." Yeah, usually, that's... usually in a movie, you know, the the big, you know, the big uh, soulful speech in court yeah. is what wins the the jury over, and that's where the movie ends. But no, <laughs> this took it just one step further, and you know, yeah, because so, so I was a little. Hey, that's unfair. And then, and <laughs> yeah. then, just a minute later, when they had that big sappy speech, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Ugh. And I just groaned. I just oh, groaned. It was so nice. And then everybody sent the money, and they could, they could keep the cafe. Uh, they could live uh, in Queens. Oh, uh, and you know what? Just like in the fairy tales, they lived happily ever after. Whoa, and I also, guess it was a fairy tale. Whoa. And then they just and they just had to sneak in. Oh yeah, and Rosa Perez lost all her money. Yeah, yeah. Now she lives with their mother. It's come on, oh, yeah, come that, on. That was a little much, but I can't say I wasn't happy when I read that. I was like, yeah, you fucking bitch, you got it. Yes. Yeah. So so. Yeah. So <laughs> scoring then. Uh, you already spoiled your with seven, yeah. right? Uh yeah. I in in the heat of the moment I gave this an eight out of ten on IMDB, but I'm gonna change that because it's it's not an eight. <laughs> an eight is reserved for great movies of all kind. This is just mm. a great romantic comedy, so I'm gonna give this a f- strong five. Okay. okay I would... you know what? It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I guess I 
it, th- my my reaction is, I guess I would see this before I see guarding Tess. But I don't know. Oh yes, that's, that's no, but that's my reaction. That's how how little I think of this movie. That is just I guess. Wow. If I have both moves, I have to see one. I guess I'll see this one, but I'm not really happy about it. I will think <laughs> about it. it, it <laughs> it's the lesser of two evils. Yeah, exactly. Would you pick this over Firebirds? Oh. Um. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think I we, can. we yeah. both agree that we, or at least I remember, I said I would pick Firebirds over Guarding Tess, because at least that has attack helicopters and explosions. No. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Firebirds have some comedic things, because <laughs> it's so bad. So there's... Yeah. Ah, uh, maybe. Well... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh my god. The lowest scored uh, movie in our podcast, <laughs> and you're contemplating picking that over this? <laughs> well. No. You know what? That's cool, man. That's your choice. <laughs> and, you know, I don't agree with it, but mm. I can't stop you. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay. Exactly. It's okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's uh, It Could Happen to You, our most heated debate so far, I think. Yeah. Um, so, um, and next week. We have Trapped in Paradise. <laughs> yeah, which I've never even heard of. Once again. Never never heard of it. Uh, I don't know what's hap- what it's about, but I have looked at the poster. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me look. And, oh. and it's definitely a straight-through <clears throat> comedy. Probably some slapstick, I'd say. I... Based re- on post- only the poster. Oh, yeah, based on John Lovitz and Dana Carvey. <laughs> yeah. I recognize the poster. Maybe it just looks like another poster. I don't know. But yeah, I, I've not seen this. The residents of a friendly Pennsylvania town foil three brothers' plan to rob a bank on Christmas. Ooh, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to have to break my rule then. Okay. Well, I don't watch um, I don't watch Christmas movies before December, but, you know, so I'll do it for you, our loving audience. <laughs> so, Trapped in Paradise, next week, it's the third movie in 1994. Yeah, um, and f- final, right? No, but no, but, uh, yeah, it is final. Yeah, it so is. it's the fourth movie. Yeah, fourth. This was the third we watched now. Yeah, Red Rock West, Garden <coughs> Test, It Could Happen 2, and next week, Trapped in Paradise. Yeah. And we're very close now to the end of uh, season one. Yeah, we're going to, uh, once again, since we're recording this in advance, we're, we are going to um, finish up... Uh, with Leaving Las Vegas, the movie he won his Oscar for. Mm. That's going to be the end of season one, which we called Road to the Oscars. And then um, we might take a little break there and start recording, because it's the end. We're going to record it in the end of December. So we'll see how long yeah. we take a break. But we'll be back, of course. Yeah, so, uh, and, and I don't uh, think you really will notice since we pre-record this. Um, but we will be back with you know what we call season two, Mr. Superstar. Yeah, so, yeah, so it'll probably be... Uh, a few weeks break, at least, just over the... The holidays. Christmas, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's... Uh, it could happen to you. Yeah. What a wonderful, wonderful movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm baiting you here. Um, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, first big uh, big disagreement. That's... Uh, it's, uh, it's, it was bound to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And like I said before, you can listen to this all in advance on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Or you can just listen to it every Tuesday on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. We're there. Just look for Madness in the Method. But uh, once again, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next one. But until then, have a good one. Bye. Bye, Madness in the Method is part of Please Don't Make a Scene. It is hosted by Tobias Vedén and Christopher Billian. Editing and directing by Tobias Vedén. Executive producer is Annika Vedén. A huge thank you to all our Patreons over on patreon.com slash don't make a scene. Rasmus Jonsson, Laura Kinney, Mom and Dad. 